Grinding your own meat can be a great way to take control of what you eat and amp up the flavor. Hi, I'm Ryan from the Grill Top Experience, and this video is the first in a series of teaching you how to master the basics of grilling. Specifically, we're gonna go over hamburgers, and this video is focused on how and why you should grind your own hamburger meat. The biggest reason for grinding your own meat is to maximize the flavor. If you buy store-bought ground beef, you really don't know what they've got in there. If they're doing a lot of steaks that week, you might end up with some steak in your grind, or it could be some of the cuts that they can't really sell, like head meat. So in order to be able to take control and get the exact flavor combinations that you want, grind your own. And when you grind your own, you know it's fresh and you know exactly what's in it. You've got control of the whole process. Most grinds are a blend. This one uses chuck to increase the fat content, but it isn't known for having a strong flavor with some sirloin, which has a much stronger beef flavor, but is too lean for hamburgers on its own. We're aiming for about 80% meat and 20% fat for a juicy burger that won't shrink as much on the grill. If you see anything that you wouldn't want to eat like silver skin, remove it so it doesn't end up in the grind. Cut up the roast into roughly one inch cubes. Some grinders can handle bigger pieces than others, but for mine, this size works best. A lot of people suggest cutting out the fat and weighing it out exactly, but I'm working with averages here and a 50-50 mix will give me about 80% meat and 20% fat. I mix the two meats together so both will be fully combined once it comes out of the grinder. I like to add a half a teaspoon of black pepper per pound of meat, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, and an eighth teaspoon of cumin. And I know that cumin sounds weird, but it helps enhance the meaty flavor. I'm not adding any salt at this point because it can ruin the texture if it's added too early. Next, put the meat in the freezer for 15 or 20 minutes to firm up for easier grinding. Today I'm using a pretty inexpensive meat grinder, but a lot of people use an attachment on their stand mixer, which works pretty well as well. If you don't have either of those, I'm going to show you how to do it in the food processor a little bit later in the video. All of the grinder pieces have been in the freezer for at least an hour, and that means they're ice cold. And that will make it so I can grind up a lot more meat before things warm up and starts melting the fat and gums up the grinder. I'm also using the large plate, which gives me bigger pieces coming through. I like that a lot better than the small pieces because that is better for things like really fine sausage. But for hamburgers, the large plate is just perfect. I shouldn't have to say this, but I don't want any missing appendages. Don't put anything in the meat grinder you don't want in your hamburger. So make sure you use the plunger that came with the grinder, not your fingers or wooden spoons or anything like that. Because the rest really isn't rocket surgery. Just put the meat in the grinder until it's all done. I let mine run for a bit to get out as much meat as possible, but some suggest using a slice of bread to get all of it. When you're done, make sure you clean all of your equipment well. It's not uncommon to hear about recalls for ground meat because of E. coli. If you're one of those people that likes your burgers cooked medium, you can reduce but not completely eliminate your risk by grinding your own meat. We do that because I always keep my equipment clean and we work in small batches and that reduces the chances that you're going to get it contaminated with E. coli. But spoiler alert, I always cook my burgers completely well done, but they're still juicy. In another video, I'm going to show you how. My favorite burger size is a third of a pound or about 150 grams. And that's a good size for most people. I always weigh them, which helps keep things even when I grill them and keeps the cooking times consistent. There's some burger forming accessories, but I really don't like them. They end up smashing the burger too hard and I prefer using my hands instead. I smash them flat until they're about a half inch bigger than the bun I plan to use, and then I go around the edges to make sure none of the pieces fall off when I grill them. Then push in the center slightly so when it cooks and swells, it'll be flat. After the first couple, it'll be second nature. I like to separate them with sheets of parchment paper, which keeps them from sticking and makes it easier to put them on the grill later. Frozen, freshly ground hamburgers are still better than most store-bought ground beef. I'll often vacuum seal some with some parchment paper for another day. What are your favorite burger toppings? Put them down in the comments below and we might feature them in an upcoming video. A lot of people will tell you that grinding your own meat is cheaper, but it's not. If you buy the whole cuts on sale, you can bring the price down, but it's often more expensive. Take one from the butcher's playbook and use your own trimmings in your grind and you'll never throw away your brisket trimmings again. You can use the fat with sirloin to get the ratio you want, or you can use the meat itself and it is fantastic. So who doesn't love having bacon on their burger? But this burger is gonna have bacon inside of it. The recipe is two parts of sirloin, one part bacon, and that'll give us about an 80-20 blend of ground beef 
and ground pork, and it's going to come out absolutely amazing. I'm weighing out the meat to make sure I get the right amount of each one. I want twice as much sirloin as bacon to get the right ratios between meat and fat. Grinding meat in the food processor is a similar process as the grinder. Cut it up into one inch cubes and then put the meat in the freezer for about 15 minutes. People tell you to grind up the different kinds of meat separately, but that is a terrible idea and I'll show you why here in just a bit. To grind up the meat, pulse the food processor, or in other words, turn it on for one second and off for a second, about 10 times. Take a look at the meat and give it a few more pulses if the meat doesn't quite look like it's ground. Even with my best mixing, it was hard to bring the bacon and sirloin together, so I put it back in the food processor. Also, I could show you what it looks like when it's overprocessed. It'll become sticky and the texture won't be as good, so avoid overmixing your grind. The flavor was still great and it filled the house with the smell of fried bacon. And the old saying is true, grind it until you find it. If you're not sure what combination of meat works for you, experiment and try which ones you like best. You might find one that's pretty amazing. I know sometimes I like to put lamb in my hamburgers and it makes it extra tender. If you want to check out the next video, you might want to subscribe because we're going to talk about how we cook these burgers on a different set of grills and a variety of methods.